An excerpt from On Miracles and Signs by St. Ignatius Briancheninov. The reason for mankind's denial of the God-man is in men. Also in man is the reason for the acceptance of Antichrist. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. John 5.43 They are both named as denying Christ and accepting the Antichrist, though the Antichrist is spoken of as one who is to come. The denial of Christ comes from man's spirit, and the same spirit accepts the Antichrist. They were added to those who accepted Antichrist, though they completed their earthly journey many centuries before his coming. They accomplished his greatest misdeed, the killing of God. A crime similar to deicide was not left for the time of Antichrist, as their spirit was in a state of enmity towards Christ, so it was in the state of union with the Antichrist, though separated from him by a great span of time, now reaching to the end of the second millennium. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard, that it should come, and even now already is in the world, says the theologian, 1 John 4, 3. Those led by the spirit of the Antichrist deny Christ. They have accepted the Antichrist in their spirit, entered into union with him, subordinated and worshipped him in spirit, confessing him as their God. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that is, God will allow it, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians 2, 11 and 12. In this judgment God is just. This will satisfy as well as accuse and judge the human spirit. The Antichrist will come in his own foreordained time. His coming will be preceded by a universal apostasy in most men from the Christian faith. Through apostasy from Christ, Mankind will prepare itself for the acceptance of the Antichrist. It will accept him in its spirit. In the very mood of the human spirit, there will arise a demand, an invitation for the Antichrist, a sympathy for him, as in a serious illness there arises a thirst for a poisonous draft. The invitation is pronounced. A beckoning voice is heard in society, expressing an instant need for the genius of geniuses who would raise material development and success to the highest degree, who would usher on earth such material well-being that heaven and earth will become superfluous for man. The Antichrist will be a logical, equitable, natural result of the common moral and spiritual direction of man. It is a terrible misfortune, the lack of true knowledge of God in man, when one takes the works of the devil for the works of God. Before the second coming of Christ, when Christianity, spiritual knowledge, and discernment will become scarce to an extreme, then there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Matthew 24, 24. The Antichrist himself will generously lavish miracles upon men, astounding and satisfying the ignorant and carnal-minded. He will give them the signs from heaven for which they seek and thirst. Whose coming, says the Apostle Paul, is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they may be saved. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 and 10. The ignorant and carnal-minded, seeing these miracles, will not stop to reason, and because of the affinity of their spirit for the spirit of the miracles, in their blindness will immediately accept the activity of Satan as the greatest manifestation of the power of God. The Antichrist will be accepted very hastily, without thought. People will not realize that his miracles do not have any blessed, reasonable goal, no definite meaning, that they are alien to truth. 
play acting deprived of meaning, filled with lies, that they are monstrous, malicious, and meaningless, straining to astonish, deceive and entice by the enchantment of a lavish, empty, silly effect. It is not strange that the miracles of the Antichrist will be accepted without question and with delight by apostates from Christianity, enemies of the truth and of God. They prepared themselves for an open, active acceptance of the messenger and the instrument of Satan, of his teachings and all his actions, having entered into spiritual contact with him at the right moment. It is worthy of thoughtful attention and sorrow to note that the miracles and acts of the Antichrist will create difficulty even for the chosen of God. The reason for the strong influence of the Antichrist on men will be centered in his hellish corruption and hypocrisy, an artful covering up of the most horrendous evil, in its unrestrained and shameless insolence, in the prolific cooperation of the fallen spirits, and finally, in the ability to create miracles that will be false but astonishing. The human mind is unable to imagine such an evil man, which the Antichrist will be. It is not possible for a human heart, even a sinful one, to believe that evil could reach such a level, as it will be with the Antichrist. He will boast loudly about himself, as his forerunners and his prototypes did. He will call himself a preacher and restorer of the true knowledge of God. The non-discerning Christians will see in him a representative and a supporter of true religion and will thus join him. He will proclaim and call himself the promised Messiah, and the children of carnal wisdom will rush to meet him, proclaim his glory, power, and genius, will proclaim him a God, become his supporters. The Antichrist will show himself to be meek, merciful, filled with love, filled with all virtue. Those who will acclaim him as such, and will submit to him as the highest good, are they who accept the truth of fallen mankind and will not deny it for the truth of the gospel. The Antichrist will offer to mankind the most exalted earthly organization of well-being and prosperity. He will offer honor, riches, luxury, enjoyment, physical comfort, and delight. Seekers of earthly things will accept the Antichrist and will call him their master. The Antichrist will reveal before mankind by means of cunning artifice, as in a theater, a show of astonishing miracles, unexplainable by contemporary science. He will instill fear by the storm and wonderment of his miracles, and will satisfy the worldly wise, he will satisfy the superstitious, and he will confound human learning. All men, led by the light of fallen nature, alienated from the guidance of God's light, will be enticed into submission to the seducer. The signs of the Antichrist will be primarily in the air, for it is in this realm that Satan mainly rules. The signs will act upon the sense of sight, charming and deceiving it. St. John the Theologian, contemplating events in the world before the end, says in the book of Revelation that the Antichrist will perform great deeds, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Revelation 13.13 13. The Holy Scriptures point to this phenomenon as the highest of the signs of the Antichrist, and the place for this sign is in the aerial realm, and it will be a magnificent and awesome spectacle. The signs of the Antichrist will complement the actions of his cunning conduct. They will seduce the majority of men to follow him. The opponents of the Antichrist will be considered as rebels, enemies of the common good and order, and will be subject to covert and open persecution, to torture and execution. The false spirits, sent throughout the world, will entice in men a generally high opinion of the Antichrist, universal ecstasy, irresistible attraction to him. The Holy Scriptures have depicted in numerous ways the forcefulness of the last persecution of Christians and the cruelty of this persecution. A decisive and definite characteristic serves as the name given by the Scriptures to this frightening person. He is called the beast, just as the fallen archangel is called a dragon. These names correctly depict both enemies of God. One acts secretly, the other more openly, 
but the beast, who is similar to all beasts, unites in himself a wide variety of cruelty. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power and his seat, and great authority. Revelation 13.2 A frightening trial will descend upon the holy saints of God. Cunning, hypocrisy, and the awesomeness of the persecutor will increase in order to deceive and seduce them. Refined, inventive, concealed by cunning, the persecutions, constraints, and unlimited power of the tormentor will place them in a most difficult situation. Their small number will seem insignificant before mankind, and their opinion will be viewed as weak and feeble. They will endure general disdain, hatred, slander, and oppression. Violent death will be their lot. Only with the special help of divine grace and under its guidance will the elect of God be able to stand against the enemy of God, to confess the Lord Jesus before him and before men.